streets of Chicago town. Cheerio, mates. <laughs> Sorry. Good morning. I'm a little excited this morning. We are going first international VAT sim flight here. A little nervous. A little scary. I think we'll be all right. We're going to go to Edinburgh to Gatwick. Not an extremely long flight. I think it showed about an hour and a half block time. Um, just trying to get the uh, trying to get the feet wet here. And in terms of VAT sim coverage, let's just refresh and make sure that uh, we're still going to have something here. Yeah, so we're going to have ground to tower here at Edinburgh. And then down in Gatwick, we should enter in, um, it looks like, what airspace is that? Uh, London Control, and then South London Control. Like those two, what we would consider centers, I guess. Um, and then down at Gatwick, ground and tower there as well. So, 
We'll take off out of here, probably go over to Unicom for about the first third of the flight, and then get back online with them, and then come down into Gatwick. So, I think it should be okay. Um, I've heard from several people it's not too terribly different. Um, my main thing is just going to be making sure I understand what they tell me. Sometimes I have a little bit of a problem understanding people, so I'm hoping that uh, we're definitely going to cut off the... Uh, British punk rock music. Actually, it's not British punk. It's just punk um, music here for good once we go ahead and get started up because I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think the only other thing I was trying to look up is like the transition altitude to where you go to the standard 2992 barometer. I think I read that happens at like 6,000 feet here. If anybody in the chat knows that, let me know if you guys fly international VATSIM. Is it 6,000 feet that I should go over to the standard barrow at that point? Uh, Jernison, hi, how's it going? Hey, Wim, good to see you again. Flying from Hong Kong to Taiwan at 737, nice. Hey, Mr. Liu, always a pleasure. How's it going? Jim Ross, how's it going? Oh, it differs based on your, based on the different charts. Is it just on the approach charts, or will I find it on SIDS and arrival and all that kind of stuff? I did see when I briefed the, uh, the SID here that we're looking at, um, it does give you an initial altitude of 6,000 and not to go above that unless instructed. So, that seems to match up with what you're saying. I don't have an approach chart yet. We don't know what approach we'll end up taking, but on the arrival chart. Yeah, see in here they consider 7,000 feet. They call it flight level 070, so I'm going to have to get used to that. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and cut off music here, and let's go ahead and get this plane fired up. We're over here on what's considered the main apron. There's one runway here in Edinburgh, and I do see that there was a GA apron kind of off that direction, but when I spawned in, I selected one of these spots kind of behind the terminal, and it said it was a GA ramp, so... That's what we went for. All right, get the batteries turned on here. I'm doing good, Mr. Lou. Can't complain. It's the last day of vacation, so a little sad about that. But figured we'd cap it off by doing a uh, international VAT sim flight and see if I'm either going to ruin my day or <laughs> make it a lot better. It says transition altitude on the charts. I'll show you a picture on Discord. Okay. Well, I was looking, and I didn't... So I was looking for transition altitude, but I didn't. Probably didn't look close enough. Yeah, I'll check Discord there. Wim, if you post one on there. David, what's going on? Good afternoon, good morning from IOW in the UK. Well, how's it going? I'm over in your neck of the woods this morning. I'm not personally, but uh, Citation 6 Bravo Papa is. Because we are flying Edinburgh down to Gatwick. For our first time flying international VAT sim. So, glad you can join us. Alright, let's go ahead and get the chocolate. Checklist prepared. Cockpit checklist. It's cleared from yesterday. Battery amps, check. Batteries look good. Interior exterior lights, check. Recog light is on outside. 
ATIS clearance. All right, we'll go ahead and pick up the ATIS here in Edinburgh. 3135. Edinburgh Information Golf. Time 1250 Zulu. Runway in use 06. Transition level flight level 70. Surface, wind variable 6 knots. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. Few at 4,500 feet. Temperature plus 16. Dew point plus 5. QNH 1018. Acknowledge receipt of information golf. And Advise aircraft type on first contact. Okay, so I got all that except for the Edinburgh altimeter. Information Golf. <laughs> Time 1250 Zulu. Runway in use 06. Transition level flight level 70. Surface. Wind variable 6 knots. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. Few at 4,500. Edinburgh Information Hotel. Oh. Time one Just got a new one. Zero Zulu. Alrighty. Runway in use zero six. Transition level flight level seven zero. Surface wind variable three knots. Visibility ten kilometers or more. Few at four thousand six hundred feet. Temperature plus one six. Dew point plus five. QNH one zero one nine. Acknowledge receipt of information hotel. And. Advise aircraft type on first. Okay, so I heard 1019 on the QNH. So my guess is that's in a different... Um, ...unit than what I'm typically doing. Let me do this. I'm going to go to my ATIS app. It's not going to be international. Let's search it real quick. Yeah, so they got... So I think I just need to change it here while I'm flying over here. Let's do that. Um, so I think that's going to be under, I'm going to go ahead and throw up the overlays so you guys can see what we're working on here. Got the APU started, so I'm not going to drain any batteries. Um, so let's go to utilities, go to setup, avionics settings, and let's go to the units is probably where it's at. Does anyone know where you go to change the barrow units to what they use over here? <laughs> would have thought it would have been right there. Make sure I didn't miss it here. So it's not there. I would have swore it would be in units. Magnetic angle, that's fine. Distance knots. Altitude, vertical speed, and feet, that's fine. Temperature, I'm leaving in Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's got to be in there somewhere. On the PFD, okay. There we go. Good call, man. There we go. That looks a little better. Sick. You're the man, Wim. Alright, so... Still shows on my thing up here, 299 or 2, but... It said 1019, so we're going to go to that.
my reading up here on my stream deck is still going to show it in. Um, well, what was it considered at that point? Yeah, hectopascals, and the mine was in inches, so. Alright, that's cool, though. We'll take that. Alright. Mission accomplished there. While I'm here, going to go ahead and pull in the flight plan. And then we'll go ahead and call in for our clearance there. Uh, top right corner in small letters on the chart itself, not on the map. Oh, there we go. Transition out to 6,000. There you go. Wim coming in clutch with my questions already here. <laughs> Getting ready to fly in uh, International Vat Sim. Show up here. I'll look at that one as we get closer, but... Okay, so yeah, here it is going to be... What do we say? Six? Yep, 6,000. Okay. Anyway, so we have hotel. So we're going to call Edinburgh Tower... Nope, ground. 2175. We have everything. Oh my. Ooh, I can barely hear that guy. Need to turn that up for sure. Okay. Edinburgh ground citation November 316 Bravo Papa IFR to Gatwick with hotel. November 316 Bravo Papa cleared to Gatwick on the Gotham 1 Delta departure runway 06. Score 6245 QNH1019. Alright, cleared to Gatwick via the Gossam 1 departure, uh, runway 6, squawk 6245, and then 1019. 6 Bravo Papa. November 316, Bravo Papa, Okay. We're past the first part. I got the squawk in. Runway 6 is in on our departure, so we're good there. One is set. Runway 16 Charlie Charlie, is that better? 1187 is going to be. Hey, again, Brian, a 16 Charlie Charlie. Tower, so I'm going to go ahead and get it put in. My mic was very quiet. Is it better now? Hey, it's fine, a lot better. Then we will not have a center, so. Right. Continue with the trims set for takeoff. Checklist. We have information hotel QNH one zero one nine request clearance to Lisbon. Weight and fuel complete. Our weight and fuel. Rhino one six Charlie Charlie cleared to Lisbon on the Gotham one Delta departure. Runway zero squeaks squeaks six squawk seven five seven two. Okay, wait and feels good. Takeoff data complete. Lisbon via the Gotham One Delta departure off of runway zero six, scorpion seven five seven two, Piranha one six Charlie Charlie. 
Charlie, Charlie, repack correct. Alright, that all looks good. V speeds set. We've got them. Pressurization landing elevation set. Under pressure. 196 set for Gatwick is good. Fuel quantity and balance check. Did that pre flight, we're good. Autopilot check. Alright, autopilot is good. Okay, we'll get ready to start the engines here in just one second. Alright. Engine start checklist. Look at the chat here real quick. Sorry, guys. Uh, cubing. Hello, how's it going? I'm doing well. Jacob, how's it going? Thank you very much. Ed and David said, Edinburgh, the granite city to Gatwick, and the green leafy south of England. <laughs> right on. Yeah, I noticed that too, Wim. The A just said 7,000, so um, I may double check with them or just not worry about it when I go to take off. We'll see. All right. I think we're ready to start the engines. Parking brake set. All right. Parking brake is set. Seat belt button on. Go. EIS cast check. Cast is clear. Throttles idle. Throttles are at idle. Let's go ahead and start them up. All right, there's 32 PSI, and we'll go ahead and engage the starter. Our runway is going to be Edinburgh right behind us, right where that easy jet is taking off. On East Apron with information hotel, QNH 1019, request start up. QNH, I need to remember that. That's what they call it. Instead of altimeter. Uh, Golf Jury, Echo Sierra Sierra, stand by one. Alright, there's a good start. Right engines, go left. There's 32. And start. Golf Junior Echo Sierra Sierra. Uh, passing message again. Golf Junior Echo Sierra Sierra is Cessna 172 with information hotel at, um, East Apron, QNH1019, uh, request start up clearance. Alright. Good start as well, right there. Left and right generators, verify oh, on. Okay. Generators are on. Bus tie, verify open. Bus tie is APU open. APU off. APU coming off. Flight controls, check. Alright, let's give the flight controls a check here. Up, down. And we're going to get on the easy right, Mike. Right. Uh, just pass Charlie, sir. Left rudder and right rudder. And steering tiller. Speed brakes retracted. Speed brakes are up. Flaps take off. Not one. Flaps. Avionics check. Uh, avionics are good. Flight plan looks good. Altimeters set. Altimeter is set to one zero one nine. What's the full name of the airport called? Sierra Nav source check. And nav source is in FMS. Ice protection, check. Ice protection, not necessary right now. No problem, Golf Sierra Sierra. Sixty-one degrees right now. Right. All of that looks good. Golf Juliet, Echo Sierra, Sierra, the tower's just going off, so you'll be on Unicom when you go, so it'll be taxiing. 
Oh, is he going offline right okay, now? Okay, that's perfect. Uh, Gulf Sierra, sure, I will call when, um, when I'm ready to taxi. Oh, tower's going offline. Gulf Sierra, sure. Oh, it did go offline. Crap. Squawk 0431, Gulf Sierra, sure. Ground citation November 316 Bravo Pop is ready to taxi with hotel. November 316 Bravo, Papa, stand 104. Uh, when the AZ 320 is passed in front of you from your left to right, taxi holding point Alpha 1 via Echo and Alpha. All right, we'll give way to the easy jet and then taxi Alpha One, and then Echo Alpha Six Bravo Papa. All right. Turned up my volume just a little bit. That guy's just a touch hard to understand. Taxi checklist. Taxi clearance. Got the clearance. Exterior lights, check. Taxi lights are on. Brakes, check. We'll check them here in one minute as we get ready to pull away. All right, parking brake is off. EasyJet has passed. We are going to pull out of here to Echo and then on to Alpha and down to Alpha 1. November 316 Bravo Alpha. Um, Adam McCrane, just going off, and the tower is off there, so uh, Unicom 122.8. Alright, we'll go over to Unicom. Six Bravo Papa, thanks for the coverage. Golf Julia Echo Sierra Sierra, likewise. We're going off the air now, uh, Unicom 122.8. Okay, hey, Robert, how's it going? Thanks for the service, Golf Sierra Sierra. How you doing, Robert? All stations, all stations, at the background, going off the air, monitoring Unicorn 122, test my eight. Thank you, Brian. Brakes are good. Nose wheel steering, check. Nose wheel is steering properly. Thrust reversers, check. And we'll check those here after we pull out onto Alpha. Alright, well, we're not going to have our tower. Uh, that should be okay. Alright, here's left thrust. That is good. Right thrust reverser. Both those are good. V speeds displayed. Well, they are displayed. Speed knob, check. Speed knob is on FMS. Crew briefing. Alright, we're going to depart via this Gossam 1 departure. And it's Pretty straightforward. We're not on Unicom, and our flight plan, I think we had 29,000 feet, so we're just going to take off, hit the altitude restrictions on the departure, and then after that, just take ourselves up to cruising altitude. So we'll make a call out as we take off here. Otherwise, we are on our own, so. Weather radar. That's not necessary. Pito static, check. And pito static should be... Norm. Yep. Alright, taxi checklist done. We're gonna stretch it all the way down to Alpha 1 down here. I'm actually gonna take that off FMS speed. Keep it on manual auto throttle for now. We're gonna go up to 200 knots and then we will uh, go from there. Slow down just a little bit here. Speeding on the taxiway. Things are going good, Robert. Can't complain. Last day of vacation, so thought I'd get in one more flight stream in the morning here while I still could. So thank you for stopping by and saying hi. Always good to see you. Alright. 
We're going to go over to Unicom. And we're going to hold short here of six. Just listen for a minute, make sure no one's coming in. And then we will get ready to take off. Edinburgh traffic citation 316 Bravo Papa, preparing takeoff runway 6 on the Gossam 1 departure. Edinburgh traffic. Alright, didn't hear anybody. And put that initial altitude up to 6,000. That's where we need to stay. The traffic skyway is 874 from the final um, part of runway 06. I thought I heard him say short final, but we'll roll out of here before he gets in. Alright, notch one flaps. Brakes are up. Final is clear. Lined up here. Straightened up on that center line. Go. Speed him up to 40. Looks good. All right. Here we go. 107. And there's rotate. Gear up. And flaps up. Oh, that's a nice looking bridge over there. All right, we're just going to hand fly here just for a minute. Edinburgh traffic Cessna Golf Chile to go Sierra Sierra is on a via for departure runway. Uh, zero 06 to the north, Edinburgh traffic. Alright, flaps are up, speed brakes are up. Auto throttle's got us at 200 knots. We're going to go ahead, put on autopilot, flight level change. It'll go ahead and take us up to 6,000, which we're already there, so. And we'll just continue to follow this departure. Traffic in the immediate area. There's the guy on final. Just let him know one more time that we are at 6,000 feet, about five miles north, and we are departing. Edinburgh traffic citation 6 Bravo Papa is about five miles north of the airport, 6,000 feet, departing on the Gossam 1 departure. Edinburgh traffic. All right, that should be the last call that we need to make, so we're good at that point. Edinburgh traffic, uh, Golf Chile, Edgar Sierra Sierra is at 1,000 feet, turning to the north now for the Edinburgh uh, traffic. All right, I'm going to go ahead and speed us up to 250 knots now. 
That's our current speed limit. We're supposed to hold 6,000 all the way to Gossam, so we're going to do that, and then once we clear Gossam, we will go ahead and climb up to our uh, filed cruising altitude, which was, I believe, 29,000. Twenty-seven thousand. All right, so we'll leave that in. We we'll go ahead and dial in twenty-seven, but we will not go flight level change until we pass through Gossip. After takeoff checklist. Landing gear up. Gears up. Flaps up. Flaps Ice up. protection, check. Not necessary. Pressurization, check. Pressurization. All norm. Altimeters, set. Altimeters are set to the 1019. Exterior lights, check. Bedroom cover, it's Skyway 874, final We're going to remain lit up here under 10,000 for right now. APU off. And the APU is off. All right. No traffic in the area, so we're good right now. Let's hop over and look at the chat right quick. Yeah, you sound like me, Robert. That's pretty much what I've done on my vacation as well. All right, Jacob, see you later, man. Thanks for stopping by. You have a good day, too. Pick up the old coffee here. Alright, so like I said, once we clear Gossam, that's when we will go ahead and make our climb up to 27 and then also go ahead and speed up. And go ahead and go over to the standard altimeter. Right. And we are on our way down to London. And they are still in. Let's make sure that we still got coverage down there. Oh, yeah. Looking good be on Unicom here for a bit and then I'll start to get picked up as we're coming in so nice I can go ahead and get the radios prepared for that 271 is going to be the London center control get that in and then the South London Control, 29425, we'll go ahead and put that in COM2. And then we will get Tower at Gatwick, which is going to be 2422. Always good to stay ahead of the flight. Whatever traffic, Skyway 924, pushing back. Facing west from stand eight. All right, so it said this. The max SID altitude was 6,000, but it said expect ATC clearance to cross Gossam or Cumbo at or above 10,000. So we probably would have gotten clearance to go above 6,000 by now, but since we're on Unicom, we're just going to follow the SID, which tells us to stay at 6,000 at least until Gossam. So that's what we will continue doing. Lights going good, Jaronson. Haven't had any major screw-ups yet, so 
happy about that. Holding here at about 250 knots for another, oh, 10 miles or so. Oh, not even that, about 8 miles. And then uh, we'll rock it up to 27,000 feet. That traffic coming off to our right over here, they're about 2,500 feet below us. They look to be climbing. They are climbing. They're now 2,000 feet below us. You can see them out the right window in that bottom right view. They are now 18 below us. Alright, looks like we're going to squeak past them, but... Well... No, oh, because they're kind of coming on this angle. <laughs> now he's turning off even more. <laughs> All right, I'm just keeping an eye on him. He is... All right, he's turning out now, but he is coming right up to our altitude. He's 900 feet below us. Uh, I think we've got him beat on speed here. I think he is joining this route, though, the way he's flying. And we're going into clouds. That's always fun when you got traffic on you. All right. Well, we're passing Gossam right now, so we're going to go ahead and rock it up. So, all right. I'm going to go to FMS speed. So now it has the FMS speed, and I'm going to go flight level change, and that is going to go ahead and start taking us up to 27,000. Now that we're passing through, I'm going to go ahead and move the altimeter to standard. There we go. 1013, I would believe, is their standard. And that guy is no longer a factor. We are blasting off past him. Alright, see you later, Robert. Yeah, Wim, I probably could have, but that's all right. Since it said, do not climb above 6,000 unless instructed by ATC, I just went ahead and followed that. I know we're on Unicom, so really it's kind of just the Wild West when you're on Unicom, but, oh well, I just went ahead and flew the, flew it like normal. All right, I'm going to turn off the lights now. Or it's standard altimeter and climbing up to 27,000. Back the map up a little bit here so we can see our route down to London. Didn't go up too high on this one. Um, always fun to kind of see the the landscape around here where you're not too used to seeing so. I thought I would keep it somewhat low, and we're going to go over some water, but then kind of just run along uh, Great Britain here, so I thought it would be fun to look at all that. Alright, well, we are pretty well clear of that SID, so I'm going to close that chart out. We'll just follow it on the map now. Go ahead and brief that arrival here in a little bit as we get a bit closer, and we'll pick up the uh, ATIS and everything for uh, Gatwick and see what runways they're landing and just make sure we're all configured there, but otherwise looking good. Uh, Jaronson, it looks like right now it is telling me that I will be landing... Just after 10 o'clock my time, so probably another 45 to 50 minutes is how much longer the flight will be. In Europe and UK, landing lights on below 10,000 feet. Nobody sees it, but that's a rule. 
Yeah, I tried to stick with it. about 2,000 to go and then we will be at cruise and should speed up to about 320 knots and we're going to be there in no time. Actually, I want to brief this sooner rather than later because once we enter the London Center, is that what they call it? Keep looking back here. London ACC, London Control, yeah. So as soon as we enter London Central Control, then we'll go down into London South Control. But before we enter that airspace, I just want to make sure that I am briefed on what they're going to tell me. And I th think I'll probably see what the top of descent looks like. Yeah, we should be within one of those airspaces before we start descending, so... Just when they start telling me what to descend via, then I'll know... Know what they're talking about. Obviously, brief these things before you do a flight, but... That's the beauty of VATSIM and flying live streams, is that you don't often know who is going to be online, so you kind of got to... Kind of just got to plan the flight... About an hour before, and then uh, brief it when you get a chance. Alright, so this one shows the transition level will be by ATC. So they're going to tell us when to transition the altitude, so that's cool. Or transition the altimeter, sorry. Um, max 250 knots below 10,000. Cool. And then we start having some step downs there starting at DISIT. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up on the flight plane just to make sure that we have those altitude restrictions in the arrival, and we do. And there's the 250 knot slowdown. So we got those speed restrictions as well. And then the last fix is Willow at 7,000, and we have that as well at 220 knots. Got it. All right. All right, so as we get a little bit closer, we'll pick up the ATIS there, see what runways they're landing. Just make sure we have something in the vicinity of what's to be expected, and then we can see what uh, what they'll have for approaches for those runways. Mach speed of the longitude is 0.84. The max box speed.
Okay, there I saw your your message, Wim, and Discord, showing me where those transition altitudes are on the map. Thank you. This is pretty peaceful. Little UK flying. Kevin Spacey has made his way to the UK. We'll do a full debrief here after we land and everything, but based on that first initial um, you know, getting the clearance, taxi, and then, well, we didn't have tower, but I'm guessing it would have been pretty similar to any other departure ATC, but nothing different at all about, uh, about this compared to normal VAT sim flying. So if I can make it through this arrival and approach without getting completely confused or screwing anything up horribly, I think we just added international VAT sim to our, uh, to our repertoire of places to fly on VATSIM, so we're not just stuck with always, always the U.S. So, plus we get to see more stuff. Not always the same cities every time in the U.S. that are always seem to be the same ones that are always staffed. So, and leave it to me to figure this out and uh, decide to do this. Literally two flights before I'm going to stop live stream flying for about two or three months while I. <laughs> redo the cockpit so that's all right when we come back we'll uh we'll fly some international bat sim as well so tomorrow evening i think is going to be the last live stream flight for quite a while so uh tomorrow at seven o'clock it's our normal live stream flight time i think we will uh, do that we'll see kimberly wants to fly along maybe we'll do an international again and maybe do vat sim i don't know how many of them will be staffed at seven o'clock central time in the U.S. though, but regardless, whatever we do, we'll probably do a VAT sim flight, and uh, but yeah, that will probably then be it, because I'm going to start taking this thing apart, moving it downstairs to its new home, and at the same time, begin Project Transformer, so no more live stream flights after tomorrow at least, probably, I conservatively would estimate probably till the end of the year, so maybe we'll start 2024 with the new cockpit and some new live stream flights but yeah I think after tomorrow that'll be it for a bit so hey what's going on Steven yeah so the upgrades what we're gonna end up doing is I guess first of all the best way to explain it is this shell is going to be converted in a way that I'm going to make certain pieces of it basically kind of modular. Um, so the goal is going to be to add a few more aircraft to the planes that I can fly and that the ones I want to stream with on the channel and that sort of thing. And so if you've seen that post, that I made a community post about it, but then I also posted on Discord about it. Um, we're going to do a Longitude, a Cirrus SR-22, and the TBM, all based on the the uh, default aircrafts there in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, the biggest thing about each one of them is they're all going to be fully scale. Obviously, this one is based on the longitude. I fly the longitude with it, but obviously, you know, I use stream decks, and I've explained that to death of why I did it that way and how it worked for me at the time when I was building it and allowed me to, you know, easily get it to the point where it's up and flying, and it does a great job. I love it, but... You know, I've had it for this way for about six months now, and I, I want to take it to the next level in terms of realism. And so um, I'm going to... It was just going to be redesigned it as the longitude, but as I started thinking of as a scale longitude, every button, every switch, motorized auto, auto throttles that move and stuff, going to design and build all of that. That was going to be the plan and just have that and have it be the longitude cockpit. But I always knew that... And that was... And, 
sorry, but going back to like the stream decks, that was also part of the point of using stream decks was that I could load in different profiles for different aircrafts and fly different ones other than just the longitude. Um, and so it became, do I want to do that, continue with it being that way, or do I want to do something different and build them out to where they're fully scale and, uh, you know, have them, have them be replicas, basically, of the real-world counterparts. And so um, I decided that was the route I wanted to take, but I didn't want to build three entirely different shells for each one. Um, I just don't have the room or the time or money or patience to do that. And so um, it became, let's build one modular cockpit that's going to allow me to, to do all of that. And so um, that's what's going to end up changing with this is going to be, it'll be built in a modular fashion that where like the windows and stuff, I can pop those out and put in a window that's more of a style of a Cirrus or a TBM or the longitude if I'm flying that. The dash can come off, a new dash can come on that's modeled exactly off of whichever plane it is I'm going to fly. Um, the center pedestal, same way. So that's going to be the plan with it. Um, I'm going to have to go one by one with them, obviously. And so the, the order in which I'm going to do them right now is going to be the longitude is going to be first. Um, after that, I'll work on a Cirrus. And then after that, we'll do the TBM. So each one probably going to take several months to do. So um, the goal here, once I take this down and start doing the longitude, maybe by the end of the year, hopefully I'll have it fully complete because again, I'm doing every button and every switch and all that. And so I'm going to have to be building all of that from scratch. So um, I've learned quite a bit in the last six months about doing custom things like that, you know, with Moby Flight and Arduinos and making your own buttons and all that. So um, I don't think, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be starting from scratch like if I would have tried to have done that six months ago when I first started building this I would have had no idea but now I have a pretty good idea of how to do that and so I'm hoping it'll be a little bit of a quicker process so um, when I do start in on that here in the next couple of weeks hopefully you know by the end of the year that's basically three months hopefully I'll have a fully scale longitude cockpit with every button and everything down to uh, where it needs to be and then the only the biggest thing is going to be this throttle I want to build my own throttle that is scale to look exactly like a longitude throttle um, but I also want to then make it motorized because the uh, longitude obviously has the auto throttle in it and in the real thing those would be moving back and forth as the plane is is changing the throttle and controlling it so I know they exist I know you know a lot of people have them for like 737 cockpits and all that kind of stuff and I've seen tutorials online of how people made those DIY so I'm just going to kind of use those as a road map and you know, learn how to make the uh, motorized portion of it and all that kind of stuff, and then just adapt it into a uh, into a Citation throttle, and uh, you know, model those on Fusion 360 and print them off, and try and make everything look as scale as possible. So that will be the goal. So, in that long-winded response, Stephen, those are going to be the upgrades to the cockpit. So. Again, I changed my mind last night on the visuals. I talked about it in yesterday's stream, how I like these three monitors and how I finally got them all lined up and that I can live with this sort of setup. But when it comes to building, like, you know, the front dash and everything, and obviously the longitude should have kind of a center pedestal right here or a center column, you know. Um, the Cirrus won't. It would be wide open, so this would actually probably work okay for a Cirrus. But obviously the Cirrus has a lot taller of a windshield. Um, and so... Yesterday I talked about doing three big TVs and having them set back a little ways from the from the cockpit, and then I could build the shell, the nose, everything, put the center columns and everything the way I want them to, and we'd have the TV situation. Um, I could probably get away with design designing it and having the TV set to where the bezels, where the two side ones intersect up there, would hide behind the columns and stuff, and I would rarely ever see them. Obviously, the best solution to get to not have to worry about any of that would be to do a curved 180 or even 220 degree screen and then have like you know two or three different projectors blending those and warping the image together which works really well it's expensive um you know three projectors compared to three 65 inch tvs you know you're looking at 
about 30% more than what you'd pay for the TVs if you go the projector route. Um, I know a lot of people mention that the projectors don't give as good of a a visual of it. The room that this is going to be in is in the basement with almost no windows. So, I mean, I can control the light in there pretty well. So, if I need it to be completely dark in there, I think the projectors would look perfectly fine. So, I'm not too worried about, like, the visuals of the projector. The main thing is the cost of them. Plus, on top of the cost of the software, you need to blend and warp everything together. Um, and then just the fact that you have to go through that process to do it and hope that it works out and gives you... Um, you know, the best view and, or the best result that you're hoping for because there's really no other way to do it other than to build the big curved screen by the projectors and then hope that when you put everything up, it all works like it's supposed to. Um, I realize with TVs, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, you're going to have to buy three big TVs and then hope that they work. And if they don't or they don't give you the result you're wanting, you're stuck with three gigantic TVs. I guess you can return them wherever you bought them. That's one thing, but... So that's really the biggest holdup in all of this, is trying to figure out what the visual is going to be. Um, if I did stick with these three monitors and have them pushed right up against the openings of the shell of the cockpit, I kind of get stuck with, you know, this is the style of window that the sides would have to be, because um, they can't be any taller, because that's the width of the screen, the, or the height of the screen. Obviously, I could shorten them up if I wanted to, but I'd be wasting a whole lot of screen real estate if I did that. This one, this is the full screen. The top to bottom that you're seeing there is pretty much the entire height of it, and then this is the full width of it. That's part of the reason that I had to kind of bring this interior of the cockpit as close as I could and keep this center pedestal to just, a, I think, seven inches wide is what it is, is because otherwise, if I went any wider, you would almost be out here looking at just the very left third of the screen, which already is tough enough trying to land when your focus is going toward the center of the screen. So... A TV would be about 8 inches wider than this, so it would hang out a little bit farther. So it would allow me to open up the cockpit here a little bit. But, like I said, they, I mean, the best alternative is to just do the curved screen with projectors. And then I can build the shell pretty much however big I need it to. The front of it, the windows, I can make them any shape or size whatsoever. I don't have to worry about monitors or bezels showing up on certain parts of it. So... I started last night leaning toward that after pretty much writing off the idea of using a projector altogether, but now I'm kind of back to square one with it, thinking maybe that is the way to go. So need to make that decision sooner rather than later, but I can go ahead and get this down into the workshop and then start working on a new dash design, building out, you know, the AP panel, building it out to match exactly the way the longitude is. And so that's that'll keep me busy, you know, at least for the next month or so doing all that kind of stuff while I'm still trying to make up my mind on on the best way to do the visuals so that's where we stand right now yeah no problem Steven well welcome to the channel I hope you stick around yeah if uh, the since you just joined yeah the uh, most of the stuff on here are live stream flights that I do here from the home cockpit but I uh, just mentioned here about 30 minutes ago, uh, this Wednesday evening, our usual Wednesday 7 p.m. Central Time flight will probably be the last one um, for probably at least till the end of the year because of what I just explained. I'm going to be redoing all this stuff. And so um, I'll still have plenty of content. Um, when I built this the first time around, I didn't document any of it, much to the chagrin of a lot of people. But uh, <laughs> This time I will. Um, I'll do some of it with edited videos that, you know, I'll film while I'm working down there in the workshop and then edit those up and post them, you know, probably, you know, kind of specific to certain things I'm working on. Like when I do the AP panel, maybe I'll make a video about that or, um, you know, or the, if I redo the GTC, especially the throttle when I design and build that, I'll make some videos on that. But I'll also probably try and do a live stream, maybe one a week or one, one every two weeks from down there in the shop while I'm working on something. So, you know, if I'm getting ready to install something or, or do something that I think people would find interesting um, and I haven't live streamed in a while, I'll probably just fire up the live stream from down there in the in the workshop. And because I do enjoy the back and forth with the chat and, and uh, interacting and stuff like that. And so I don't want it to all just be videos from now until the end of the year. So. Um, I'll probably still try to do a live stream here and there, but again, like I said, no no flights. It'll just be uh, home cockpit building 
stuff. So, man, we are riding on top of some thick clouds. Holy cow. Let me look at the uh, Simaware map. Oh, yeah, there's some weather here. Not where we're going to be landing. Looks pretty clear down there. So, actually, I think we're just going to be riding on top of all this weather. So, that's cool. Let's see how close I am to... London Center, see when they'll be contacting us to contact them. Actually not seeing myself. There I am. Okay. Alright, well we're not too far away, so... And our top of descent is about 50 miles out, so we'll see if they contact us here fairly soon. And I need to brief that arrival. So it's going to be the Dissit and Kildi arrival. Okay. That works. And we already have all of those altitude restrictions, so... Alright, we'll watch V-Pilot up here to see if they ping us, and if not... I'll contact them here in about another 25 miles or so. Alright, cool. Steve, what's going on? Good morning again from Phoenix. How's it going, man? Alright, so I have 271 in for London Center Control. Oh, did the other one go offline? Oh no. That's still showing up here. Maybe just we're not in range of it yet. That could be. Alright, getting a little bit closer here. Oh, and now, um, Gatwick actually has about what I would consider approach. It looks like they call it director. So, okay, cool. So as we get closer, we'll get the Gatwick approach, we'll get Gatwick tower, and we'll get Gatwick ground. Awesome. And according to the V-Pilot, or the Simaware map, we should have both centers all the way in. I don't see the other one showing up on my V-Pilot, but maybe they're refreshing or something, so. But the one we should be entering their airspace in here in just about 10 miles is showing online, so we'll see if they contact us. Can I go ahead and pull up Gatwick Adis? Yes. 36525. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to pull it up on the map here because I don't have all of my things configured correctly and I don't want to have to change a bunch of the radios here. Okay, so right now it's Foxtrot. Transition flight level is 70, according to that. One zero one four is a Q and H. Foxtrot. Runway in use, 26 left. That's it? Is there only one runway in Gatwick? That can't be. Now ah, there's multiple. There's 26 left and 26 right, but it said 26 left is in use. So, let's assume we're going to get 26 left. So, when I look at our procedure, we do have 26 left in for the arrival, so that's good. And when I look at approaches, they do have an ILS 26 left. What's the last fix on that arrival? Willow? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put in the Willow transition. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up that chart and pin it down. 
So, LS26 left. Willow transition. Let's pin that. Do they list minimums? Mandatory two thousand. I'm sure it's on here somewhere, but I don't see it. Seven sixty-five. All right, there's our ping from London Center. Let's go ahead and contact them. One two one point seven. And let me find my mouse. There it is. And that was our top of descent. But we can catch up to that if we need to. Unicorn 122, that's my 8, we're good, 62, thanks, love you. Super 8, Uniform, November, direct, red circle, I'm final, 290. Try and jump in here. Red circle, I'm 290, Super 8, Uniform, November. London Center, citation, November 316, Bravo, Papa, is flight level 270. November 316, Bravo, Papa, hello, thank you. The distance 1, Gold, for arrival, the Gatwick, descent now, flight level 150, double Kidley. All right, we'll descend flight level 150 at Kidley, 6 Bravo Papa. Hey, Bravo departed at Heathrow, climbing 3,000. Little 8 Bravo, hello, climb now, flight level 140. 140, hello, Bravo. 011, contact Sunset Tower, 123, that's my 805. Three six eight descent to altitude four thousand feet by heading two seven zero degrees. Descent to altitude four thousand feet heading two seven zero degrees. Two 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 six. Under control, right air zero one Papa, sounding view whiskey one. Ready for departure two seven eight. Right air zero one Papa, hello, runway two seven seven twins uh, zero two zero degrees one zero knots. Good take off. Good take off two seven right air zero one Papa. Two zero one two seven continue descent now flight level one four zero by absolute. Five miles to Kidley. We're going down to 15,000. The 368 percent to 2,000 feet. Central 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 2,000 feet. Looks good. D three six eight, you gonna make the glide from there or do you need four miles? Uh no fine D three six eight. Okay, turn left heading uh, two five zero degrees clear down at two two. Left two five zero clear down at two two east two two six. Uh sorry, what was the call sign then? Turn down the I've game sound a little bit. Just so I can hear V pilot a bit better. And uh, descend to flight level 200, please.
Uh, London Control, Shuttle 8 Bravo, off station, 2 minutes. Uh, roger. Uh, Shuttle 8 Bravo, off station, 2 minutes. Uh, Shuttle 8 Bravo, off station, 2 minutes. Bloody hell. Uh, let's see. Ryanair, zero one, Papa Tony, mate, Charlie on, please. There you go. Easy 368, tower 123805. 123805, easy 368, thanks, mate. And then zero one, Papa, climb now, flight level 110, point passing on, please. Passing out of 6000 and for 110, flight level, right on. And give it 127, nothing further now, Unicom 1. In fact, you can contact Gatwick Direct to now, 126, that's not 825. There we go. We caught up with the Bravo station. Delay Bravo, thank you. The Panda 9, Aquila, nothing further. Unicom 122, that's fine. Unicom 122, Lufthansa 9, Unicom 122. Unicom 122, Lufthansa 9, Unicom 122. Unicom 122, Lufthansa 9, Unicom 122, Lufthansa 9, Unicom 122. 316, Bravo, Papa, contact Gatwick, Director 126, that's fine, 825. 26, 825, 6 Bravo, Papa, thanks. Double 8, Papa, climb flight level 340. What do you record time? Until we bottom out here at 15. By the 522, turn left heading 270 degrees. Left heading 270, the By the 522, speed 180 knots when established on the localizer, runway 26 left, descend with the glide path. Speed 180, and when established on localizer, descend with the glide path of the 522. London Director, citation November 316, Bravo Papa is at 150, just past the Kidley um, waypoint on the distant Kidley arrival. Citation November 316, Bravo Papa, Gatwick Director, hello, it's landing runway 26 left, there's no delay, hotel is current. Roger, 26 left, no delay, hotel's current. Director, I'm at the one to Bravo and Mr. Bush. Imagine one to Bravo, go director. Hello, Roger. It's vectors for the ILS approach from way 26 left. Maintaining an altitude of 3,000 feet. That's copied, maintaining 3,000 left, come on to Bravo. Easy, 73, Whiskey Delta, turn left, heading 350 degrees, speed 180 knots. That's 350, speed uh, 180 knots, easy, 73, Whiskey Delta. Go 5252, turn left, heading 270 degrees. Um, my game is KLM 5252, so no. I don't think it will perform, I'm going to disconnect. KLM 5252, Roger, uh, if you come back within the next 30 seconds or so, that's fine. Yeah, I don't think that will be happening, so, uh, see ya. Alright, <laughs> Roger, that's a shame, see ya. Have you seen one? Hi, Charlie, I've been with you for like level 50. Good, 75 Charlie Echo, Gatwick Director, break, connection 1 2 Bravo, turn left, heading 0 8 0 degrees. Heading 0 0 net on Bravo. KLM 5252, Gatwick Director, good to have you back, turn left, heading 270 degrees. 270 degrees, KLM 5252. 75 Charlie Echo, climb now, flight level 170, report your passing altitude. I'm in 170 and passing 5000 feet. Please don't touch on it. But that's a 1522 fully established, that's 56. But the 1522, there's no ATC speed restriction. Please see the person 1522. 
Okay, up 5380, no fur for ATC, mighty Unicom 122, disregard. Sky up 5380, contact London Control, 127.1, bye bye. 127.1, thank you, 5, Sky up 530. Spider 1522, contact Gatwick Tower, and only 124.225, bye bye. Going to Tower, 1425, bye bye. 87 Tree Whiskey Delta, turn left, heading 280 degrees. When established on the localizer, runway 26 left, descend with the glide path. Left 280, when established localizer, 26 left, descend with the glide path, please descend with the glide path. Deeper 1, 2, 7, descend. Flight level 8-0. That's the 127. Go direct to descend, flight level 8-0. Approach checklist. Exterior lights, check. Good. Pressurization landing elevation, verify. V speeds, set. At last stage, you can't go with direct. Apologies on the line, line second. Uh, X-ray uniform construction to Lisbon, 86 with information on the tele Uniform, gather at the contact the tower, 124 decimal 225. 124 225, you see 86 Bye. Bye now, break, uh, November 316, Bravo Pabba, you seem to be descending without clearance, but uh, you can descend flight level 80. Oh, Roger, yeah, we'll go to 8 0. Sorry, I thought we were cleared to descend via the arrival. Yeah, no worries. That's not really a, uh, a thing in the UK, but no worries. Okay, gotcha. Sorry. Six problem, Papa. Great, cool. Oh, well, there we go. There's our first issue. Okay, so I'm going to turn off Venus. Uh, Nordic 1 Victor Echo, Gap Director. Hello, climb now, flat level 1, tree 0. Report to your passing the altitude. Level 130, passing 3000, then now take one Victor Echo. Easy, 7 Tree Whiskey Delta, there's no ATC speed restriction. No ATC speed restriction, easy, 7 Tree Whiskey Delta. Epstein 1 2 Bravo, turn left, heading 340 degrees. Heading 340, left, turn 1 to Bravo. Okay, then 5252, five, turn right, heading 070 degrees, speed 220 knots. Uh, turn right, 070, uh, speed 220 knots. Uh, okay, then 5252 is about 36 miles. Ice protection check. Minimums, 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 check. Thanks, break easy, 7 tree, Whiskey Delta, contact Gatwick Tower, course and only 124.225, bye bye. Tower, course and only 124.225, 7 tree, Whiskey Delta, thanks, bye. You were 7 5 Charlie Echo, uh, Unicorn 122.8, bye bye. 122.8, thank you, service, speed bird 7 5 Charlie Echo. Range 226 at 5 level 0. Rings 226, Gatwick Director, hello, it's landing runway 26 left, there's no delay, information hotel is current. Rings 26, say again please. It's landing runway 26 left, there's no delay, information hotel There's is our clearance current. out of the clouds. 
Bearing 26 information hotel, I'm en route right now. Bearing 226 and negative, I'm just letting you know that it is landing runway 26 <laughs> left. Maintain your current route. Alright, sir, you're excited. Alright, we're at 8,000 feet. We're good. Neptune 1 2, Bravo, speed 180 knots. Speed 180, Neptune 1 4. Speedbird 127, turn right, heading to correction 260 degrees. Neptune 1 2 Bravo, turn left heading 280 degrees. When established on the localizer and way 26 left, descend with the glide path. Heading 280 when established, descend with the guide and uh, to the left and uh, one, uh, Neptune 1 12. Very exclusive. Uh, the JPG at Vectors, please. Nodic 1 Victor Echo, turn left heading 035. Heading 035, uh, Nordic Pacific Direct. Nordic 1, Victor Echo, contact London Control 129er, decimal 425, bye. Contact London Control 129er, 125, uh, Nordic Pacific Direct, bye bye. Nordic 1, Victor Echo, uh, just confirm 129er, decimal 425. 129, 425, Nordic Pacific Direct. LM 5252, turn left, heading 360 degrees, speed 180 and up. Speed 180 and up, turning left, 360 degrees, KLM 5252. Speedbird 127, turn right, heading 280 degrees. Let's turn one to Bravo, step Neptune 1 to Bravo, Roger, there's no ATC speed restriction. Roger. Neptune 1 to Bravo, contact Gatwick Tower, Carson only, 124, decimal 225. Bye bye. 124, Neptune 1 to Bravo, thank you, bye. Bird 127, about 40 track miles, descend to altitude 6,000 feet, the QNH 1014. Okay, so this has us turning like a, almost like a holding turn here. Um, okay, then 5252, five, turn left heading 340 degrees. See if he gives us a vector prior to that happening, or if that's actually what we're going to fly. Three one six Bravo Papa descend flight level seven zero down to seven zero six Bravo Papa. LM five two did you get? Get them five two five two turn left heading two three question two four zero degrees. When Jarenson, it's up, it's we're in the um, um, two, six, left, descent, citation longitude. Uh, heading two four zero degrees, when it's up, it's localizer, uh, descent, it's left. Yeah, citation uh, longitude, five, Jarenson. LM five two five two. The bird 127 descend to altitude at 4,000 feet. Neptune 
November 316 Bravo Papa, turn left heading 080 degrees. Left heading 0806 Bravo Papa. Thank God. Got us off of whatever that weird approach was going to be. Alright, so now we're in heading mode. And he should take us into the localizer, is my guess. Yeah. That's going to be his plan anyway. So I went ahead and activated vectors to final. That should take care of everything in terms of what we need to do in anticipation for this. So we're at 220 knots. I'm going to go first notch of flaps. We are fully lit up outside, so we are good there. We're at 7,000 feet, so I have five, two, five, two. There's no speed altitude. Restriction. No, eight. KLM 5252, five, contact Gatwick Tower, call sign only, 124 decimal 225, bye-bye. 124 decimal 255. KLM 5252, negative, 124 decimal 225. 124 decimal 225, uh, cheers, bye-bye. Thanks, bye now. <laughs> I love these guys. November 316, Bravo Papa, turn left heading 050 degrees. It's about 30 track miles, descend to altitude 5,000 feet, the QNH 1013. Alright, 050, and then we'll descend to 5,000 in about 3 miles. And 1013, I believe you said, QNH 6 Bravo Papa. Number 316 Bravo Papa, uh, A firm, the QNH 1013. And uh, that's just letting you know you've got about 3 zero. you've got about 30 track miles to touch down. You can descend now to altitude 5,000 feet. Roger, 6 Bravo Papa, thank you. Alright, 30 miles to get down to 5,000 feet, so, cool. We'll start that descent. We're going to go ahead and move this to 1013, which we're on. If I move it a little bit... See, I can move it a couple of dots before it switches. We're going to shoot for the middle there. Yeah, that Bird, works. Bird 127, turn right, heading to correction, 300 degrees, descend to altitude 3,000 feet. Yeah, we had 30 miles to get down to 1,000 feet, so we're fine there. So I'm going to go ahead and go second notch of flaps here. One one zero point nine. Just make sure that is still in. Yes, it is. Eleven one six. Bravo Papa. Descend to actually three thousand feet. The speed one eight zero knots. Descend to three thousand. Speed one eight zero six. Bravo Papa. Alright, so they give you, yeah, so it sounds like when we came in descending via the arrival, that's not a thing they do over here. So it sounds like a lot of what you do over here has to be... Do a 127, turn left heading 2980 degrees when you given to you on the by, localizer and way 26 left, descend with the glide path. Has to be given to you by ATC, so that's good to know. Do a 316, Bravo Papa, turn left heading 350 degrees. Left 3506, Bravo Papa. Alright, 
This is pretty. Looks nice out there. Good old UK London. Alright, this has not been bad at all. In fact, I kind of like this. A little less hectic than uh, <laughs> the United States. Alright, we're on lock one. We should grab the localizer once we're in range. We're at 3,000 feet. Hundred eighty knots, like they told us. Speedboat one, one two seven. The speed one six zero knots until four DME. One, Camera director, hello, it's Ryan Ezra, one Papa, inbound, uh, Midhurst, at uh, flight level 140. Ryan Ezra, one Papa, get with director, hello, it's landing runway 26 left, there's no delay. India is hey, current, Kimberly. your aircraft type and cleared level. Sure. We can fly. I think 26. Assuming uh, they're online. Left, uh, cleared level we'll fly here eight. Wednesday night. Flight level 8, zero, aircraft type, Boeing 738. Yeah, the accents are fun, Thank aren't you. they? Thank you. Brakes, Speedbird 127, contact Gatwick Tower, course and only, 124, decimal 225, bye-bye. Yeah, you should give me a left turn. Seven degree, one, one low, six, ten, grab a pass, turn left, off, heading 290 degrees. Zero, when you establish on the zero, localizer, runway 26 left, descend with the glide path. Left 290, once established, we'll descend with the glide path. Six, Bravo, Papa. Alright, there's our turn to intercept the localizer. Hello, this is Jimmy for the Fox Hot Fox. Go ahead one, and drop one, gear. Channel 4 to Fox Truck, Gower Director, hello, it's landing runway 26 left, there's no delay. Information India is current. And there is full flaps. Expecting 186 left. Uh, information in the other turning up. Ryan is 01 Papa, turn left heading 080 degrees. Left heading 080 degrees, Ryan is 01 Papa. Shannex 42 Foxtrot, report to your aircraft type. Aircraft type is Boeing 752. Thank you. Waiting for the localizer. There we go. And then we will follow the glide slope down. There is runway. There is two six left. Awesome. Ryan is zero one papa about three five track miles. Descend to altitude three thousand feet for Q and H one zero one three. Descend altitude three thousand feet Q and H one zero one three Ryan is zero one papa. And then three one six Bravo Papa. The correction there's no ATC speed restriction. Roger, no speed restriction. Six Bravo Papa. November 361 Bravo Papa, contact Gatwick Tower, course on only 124 decimal 225. Bye bye. Over to Tower 24225, Six Bravo Papa, thank you for the help. Goodbye. Bye now. Gatwick Tower, citation November 316, Bravo Papa. Papa Gavita, hello, continue approach, runway 26 left, number one. Roger, continue approach, 26 left, number one, 6 Bravo Papa. 66, 6, runway 26 left, clear take off, minus 250 degrees, 6 knots. Clear take off, 26 left, 26. 
Alright, everything was looking good. Seabird 127, contact out of ground, 1 to 1, death fully. Wonder what they call. Is it FBO parking? Oh, I'm just going to tell them GA parking. Kimberly, did you hear him say bye now? Citation 316 Bravo Papa, runway 26 left, clear to land. 250 degrees, 6 knots. Clear to land, 26 left, 6 Bravo Papa. Sick. Urgent 66, contact Lama Control, 134, decimal 125. Bye bye. 34, 125, agree with Bruce. This has been a blast. Ten knot headwind, approach speed was 119, so we'll hold it at about 129. And then we will take it once we get over the numbers, because I still don't trust the auto throttle doing what I want it to do. Alright. guys waiting for us there so get down and try not to hold up the line here a couple of stutters it's a big airport so I'm okay with that Charlie again uh, you see another one truly Charlie and uh, Philip another one to Charlie get hello hold mic one by mic hold mic one by mic uh, you see another one truly Charlie They have a ground, but I don't think I had the ground frequency in yet. Over to ground, 6 Bravo Papa, see ya. Yeah, with ground citation, November 316 Bravo Papa is clear of 26 left. November 316 Bravo Papa, Gatwick Ground. Hello, you can taxi to Hangar 7 via Tango. Taxi to Hangar 7 via Tango, 6 Bravo Papa. And you can disregard the message I sent to you, sorry. Roger. Where in God's name is Tango? Okay, so I guess I can cross. Delta Echo, Chris, push and start, stand yeah, one there one we go. About 67 Delta Echo, thank you. Stand 113, push and start approved, facing east. Push and start approved, facing east. Delta After landing checklist. 127, continue taxi, stand 27 via Juliet. Not an active runway in use, so that's cool. Thrust reversers, stowed. They are stowed. Flaps, check. Flaps are up. Ice protection, check. It's off. Exterior lights, check. And we're just taxi lights for right now. Easy taxi right over here to Hangar 7.
Good morning, Gatwick Crown. This is Alpha Lima 151. How do you read me? Alpha Lima 151. Hello, IVG5. Copy. Alpha Lima 151. Here's our hangar. Two four eight seven, hello, visibility five. Well, visibility four, just a little bit quiet. Okay. We're gonna spin around and face the other direction because I hate parking and looking at buildings. Is it Go. Easy 86 X-ray uniform taxi, Quebec Alpha, Lima, and Quebec hold Parking short. Parking brake is set, and we made it. Uh, oh, that Quebec was fun. Alpha, Lima, Quebec hold short of Chile. Do you see 86 X-ray uniform? And Griffin 2810, push and stop. Griffin 2810, stand 18, push and start the proof. Gordon, what's going on, man? No problem. Push proof, please. Griffin you caught the fun part. That's all that matters. AJ, how's it going? That's right, man. We decided to do the uh, last day of vacation for me, so I decided to either ruin my day or make it a whole lot more fun by flying our first ever VATSIM international flight, and it was a blast. Wim, thanks very much for watching, man. Always appreciate it. Oh, you bet, dude. We're going to definitely fly more around your Bramble Bell miniatures there is Kimberly, and uh, she wants to fly somewhere in England on Wednesday night, so I think we will. Assuming they're online. I hope they stay online that late, but we will see. Thanks, Boredom, and thank you, Mr. Lou. Butter Taxi. <laughs> Thanks, That's Boredom. Crown. Good morning. This is I wanted to thank these guys, AJ but... Uh, type Airbus A320. Uh, ready for copy. Air for clearance to Frankfurt. Alpha Lima 151, I think if I catch a break here, I'm just going to tell them thanks, because they were awesome. As your final cruising level. Uh, yeah, I'm going to So I didn't understand. Do you can, can, so we can accept a firm? We'll not? wait for a break here and then I'm going to let him know that Alpha that was Alpha awesome. One five and that I loved one. it. Thank you. Peter Frank, Seat first, Minco, one mic departure, squawk one, two, five, six. There goes an easy jet. Flight level three, one, zero, at your final right cruising window. level. Thanks for going, can you please repeat? Alpha Lima 151, cleared Frankfurt, Nympho, one mic departure, squawk 1256, and expect flight level 310 as your final cruising level. Clear to Frankfurt via MIM 1 mic on departure on 26 Lima, squawking 1256, and Let's expecting flight level 310. Alpha Lima 151. Alpha Lima 151, uh, your readback is correct. Just double check in text to make sure uh, that otherwise report fully ready on this frequency. Get our punk music back on. Alpha 167 Delta Echo, cross taxi. Alpha 167 Delta Echo, taxi. Holding point Alpha 2, runway 26 left via Lima. Papa and Alpha Sierra. Alpha 2, runway 26 left via Lima, Papa, Alpha Sierra for a point six on the trigger. We'll hop in here just one second. Yeah, right now. I get big They're busy, but I definitely want to let them know. The last station was a bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit The 86 x ray uniform, you just took a wrong turn, but it's okay. You can follow the aircraft in front taxi holding point Alpha 2. See if that were US VATS and they would have said, You've taken a wrong turn, idiot. Banned. No, I'm just kidding. Alpha 2 volume, Papa Alpha 0, sorry about the 86 x ray uniform. Uh, I'm probably concentrated there. It's okay. Hello, ground, it's Ryanair 01 Papa's just vacated. Echo. 101 Papa, Gatwick Ground. Hello, taxi runway 08 left. Romeo and Juliet. Hold short, Papa. Expect stand Romeo one to you. Romeo and Juliet. Awesome. 
Taxi, but let's get a call uh, back. Left for Romeo and hold short, uh, Julia, expect, expect stand one two. Uh, not quite, zero eight left, Romeo and Juliet, hold short, Papa, and uh, yeah, expect stand one two. Okay, zero eight left, Romeo and Juliet, hold short, Papa, expect uh, stand one two, right now, zero one, Papa. Griffin two one zero, taxi. Griffin two eight one zero, taxi, hold point, Mike one, one way two six left, via Mike. Mike one by Mike, uh, uh, Griffin two eight one zero. Ground citation 6 Bravo Papa, we're getting ready to shut down over here. I just wanted to let you know this is our first international VAT sim flight and you guys were awesome. So if you'd pass that on to your fellow controllers and we will definitely be back for more. Thanks a lot for the coverage. That is wonderful news. Thank you. Okay. Alrighty. Let's shut down. Shut down checklist. Uh, the number, uh, one, four, Throttles four, idle. Uh, right, right, throttles are at idle. Parking brake. Parking brake is set. Ice protection off. Protection's off. Engines stop. Alright, let's shut them down. Emergency lights off. Emergency lights are off. Standby power switch off. Standby power is off. APU off. APU is off. Exterior lights off. Recog light is off. Battery buttons off. And batteries shut down, and there goes the ATC. All right. Guys, like I just told him, that was freaking awesome. Honestly, it's almost a little less... Um, oh, we got a ping. They're going to tell me never do that again. Ugh. <laughs> Somebody, Ethan Reed, E-G-L-L, -L, said, Nice job, bud. Much better than most North Americans do over here, LOL. <laughs> Alrighty. All right, well, we are fully shut down now. That flight is finished. We have got one more on the agenda. That sucks. I wish I wouldn't have taken this long to figure out how much fun International Vatsim is because after tomorrow night's flight, that's going to be it for a while. So anyway, thank you guys for stopping by. Boredom, thanks, man. I will hope to see you in the next one. That is going to be tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Central Time. I think we'll have... Kimberly in the cockpit, and if they're online, we will definitely come over and fly something over here uh, internationally for sure, whether it's London, Germany, something. But yeah, this has been awesome. they It's almost a lot less stress than, uh, than it is in the U.S., because the only mistake I feel like I made was I started descending via that arrival, which, now that I think about it, they never gave me the clearance to descend on the arrival. He gave me a descend to 15,000 at this Kildee waypoint, which was the second waypoint on the arrival. But now that I think about it, yeah, he never said to descend any lower than that. But I continued descending via the arrival. And so when I got passed off to the uh, the director controller, which I guess is our version of approach, he uh, let me know that I wasn't cleared to descend, but followed it up with a quick, but that's okay. Go ahead and descend to 8,000 or whatever it was. So that was awesome. So now that I have that mental note, I know that uh, only descend when they tell you. And like I said, that makes it almost a lot less stressful because they pretty much walk you in the entire way once you start getting... I mean, at that point, I think I was still 100 miles out from the airport. So I loved it. That was awesome. So anyway, thanks, guys, for stopping by. I'm going to call it a day for now. Go enjoy the rest of my vacation. And then we'll be back tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. With Kimberly in the cockpit, a dual cockpit situation. We'll fly somewhere internationally on VATSIM. And then, as you've heard, that'll be the last one we do probably for a good three months because I'm going to then begin Project Transformer here on the cockpit. And there'll be plenty of content to come along to, uh, to follow that journey. So, anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Jaronson, see you, man. Mr. Lou, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. And Wim, awesome. Thank you very much for stopping by. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day. See ya.